Hello, Mount Sinai and those listening in. Uh, let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come to say thank you for the privilege of coming together, even though we are not together. Father, we ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear you and to receive you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we continue to be on article number 11, The Perseverance of Saints. Our author writes, we believe that such only are real believers as endure unto the end, that their persevering attachment to Christ is the grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors, that a special providence watches over their welfare, and that they are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. And our main scripture has been John the 8th chapter, verses 31 and 32 which reads, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And our focus continues to be on the latter part of verse 32, and the truth will set you free. We've been looking at truth that will set us free. And one such truth is that it's in our second declaration of freedom and we've said that we have freedom from defeat and we have no obligation to the flesh and this is found in romans the eighth chapter verses 5 through 17 but again today i will only read verses 5 through 6 and it reads those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. And so we continue to look at defeat as a mindset. We said that if my mind tells me that I'm defeated, then I'm defeated. But if I change the message that I'm sending to my mind, then my outlook will change. And so we've been looking at the disciples, uh, Peter in particular, how his mindset went from being pretty much on top of the world while he was walking with Jesus to that of being defeated when Jesus was crucified. Uh, how he spent two days in pretty much in shock and with guilt and regrets, but then Sunday morning came and things change. Last time we left off where Jesus just appeared to the disciples while they were behind closed doors, uh, behind closed locked doors. And if you're saying to yourself right about now, huh? Last time? What last time? Then go to Mount Sinai MBC of Memphis Incorporated, the YouTube page, and look at all our previous messages. And don't forget to subscribe so that whenever we put a message out, you will be notified and then you'll know where we are. So for today, let us go back, pick up with Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 44, starting with verse 44. It reads, he, being Jesus, said to them, the disciples, this is what I told you while I was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And so first of all, Jesus reminds them of what he had already told them before he was crucified. Uh, remember back in Luke, the 18th chapter, starting with verse 31, it, it says, Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. 
on the third day he will rise again and so if you study the scriptures uh, you will find that he told them this several times but they didn't get it verse 34 says the disciples did not understand any of this its meaning was hidden from them and they did not know what he was talking about and, and I get that uh, think back to when you were a child or maybe a teenager or even an adult and your mama or your daddy or a teacher or some wise person gave you a warning of, of or some wise counsel that they gave you and that at the time when they gave it to you it meant absolutely positively nothing to you and in fact you were wondering why are you telling me this but then later on sometimes years later understanding came and it proved to be useful information this is what happened to the disciples jesus told them a lot of stuff but they would not they would not need but the under well jesus told them a lot of stuff that they would need but the understanding was not there they were too busy pretty much enjoying celebrity status uh, that came with hanging out with Jesus. And, and so they were too busy debating about who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom uh, when Jesus established it on earth. So in verse 45 of Luke, the 24th chapter, it says, Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scripture. Remember we've said that my mind controls my thoughts. If my mind tells me that I'm free, then I'm free. So Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And so think about it. We hear a lot of stuff. We read a lot of stuff. But unless our minds are open to it, it's just a lot of stuff. And so Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand scripture. And if scripture, if the Holy Spirit does not open our minds to understand scripture, then it's just foolishness to us. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 18, says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. And then 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 14 says, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. And so, but once their minds were open, Jesus spoke to them the gospel. Verse 46 says, He told them, This is what is written The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Then in verse 48, Jesus says, You are witnesses of these things. Think about it. A witness it is one who has information or knowledge of something. If you are one that has information, or knowledge of something, then that means that you can give information or knowledge. You can bring light or confirm something that has happened. It, it should be noted that Jesus said to the disciples, you are witnesses, plural, meaning that they all are witnesses. Everybody that saw anything related to him uh, were witnesses. He said, you are witnesses of these things. And, and think about the importance of witnesses. Most of what we believe is based on witnesses. In, in, in this era of online shopping and, and social, social media, people have made a job out of trying out different products and giving a good or a bad review. 
uh, I don't know about you, but whenever I buy something online, I always read the reviews. I'll read the good, I'll read the bad, I'll read the ugly before making the decision to try or not to try out the product. Think about it. It's other people's testimonies that will influence our decisions. In court cases, it's witnesses that will make or break a case. Jesus knew this would be the case. Thus, he told his disciples, you are my witnesses. You are witnesses of these things. What things? That Christ will suffer, that he will rise from the dead on the third day. They would be witnesses to all that Jesus had said and all that he had done. But all of that would mean nothing if he had not gotten up from the grave. The resurrection is what makes Christianity different from all other religions. If Jesus had not gotten up from the dead, there would be nothing to talk about other than he was a good person. The Roman officials had crucified lots of people before Jesus and they had crucified a lot after Jesus. But the difference is the resurrection. They were witnesses that he was the Christ, the son of the living God, that had been crucified, buried, but yet had risen from the grave. Jesus didn't, didn't just appear to the 11 disciples. He stayed on earth for 40 days after his resurrection and made several appearances during that time. When he first appeared to the disciples, Thomas was not there. And Thomas refused to believe unless he saw him for himself. And I mean, hey, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, I mean, I'm okay with Thomas. Of course, that was not a problem for Jesus. So eight days later, he just appears while they are behind, again, behind locked, closed doors. And, and then he allowed Thomas to look at the nail prints in his hands and to put his hands in, in his side so that Thomas could believe and so that Thomas could also be a witness. And then sometime later, Jesus made a third appearance. And this time, uh, seven of his disciples was out fishing in the Sea of Galilee. And, and then probably near the end of the 40 days, Jesus was seen by over 500 brethren at one time, all witnesses of his resurrection. Also, probably near the end of his 40 days, Jesus appeared to James, his half-brother. Now think about that. Jesus grew up in the house with James, and yet James did not believe that he was the Christ. John, the seventh chapter, verse five says, for even his own brothers did not believe him. Again, I get that. Who among us would believe that the brother I grew up with was the son of God? I I'm sure that they thought he, Jesus was probably on the strange side. Uh, they probably thought, you know, that he won't do anything. Can you imagine having a brother that never did anything wrong? In my mind, I would think that after Jesus appeared to James, James uh, did some reflecting of his childhood with Jesus. And, and, and I would imagine that while he was, you know, going back, thinking about some things, he was probably having some aha moments. Oh, now that makes sense. Oh, so that's why he didn't do this, or that's why he didn't do that. And, and so then on day 40, Jesus appeared to his disciples at his ascension. And, and then finally, about two years later, near Damascus, he appeared to the apostle Paul. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, he was seen by many people, believers as well as unbelievers. He was seen by unbelievers, many unbelievers, who hurled out insults at him. 
But after the resurrection, he was seen by believers who could be witnesses of his resurrection. The gospel is the most important message that the church has to proclaim. That Christ died, he was buried, he rose again, and he was seen by others. There was witnesses of his resurrection. Come back next time to hear their testimonies. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you for the witnesses all those thousands of years later and, and that their truth has remained truth even until now, causing us to believe. Father, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that's it for today. Come back next week to hear about the witnesses.